coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've been working on this product for a while, and I just didn't want to miss today. So <laughs> thank you for having me. And um, we got something great to announce today. Before we get to it, I've got a few updates uh, for you. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is iBooks. You know, uh, we launched the iBook store less than a year ago. And uh, one of the milestones we've hit is that users have downloaded over 100 million books in less than a year from the iBook store. And today we're announcing uh, that Random House, the largest trade publisher, is bringing their over 17,000 books to the iBook store. They're going to be joining uh, the other five big guys. And uh, we have now over 2,500 publishers uh, distributing through the iBook store. So we're really thrilled about getting Random House. So that's iBooks. Some good stuff happening there. Now, as you know, iBooks is one of our three stores, right? We have iTunes, the App Store, and iBooks. And they all use the same uh, Apple ID to, uh, to access them. And you have to have an account with Apple. Now, Recently, we just crossed 200 million accounts. And these are accounts with credit cards and one-click purchasing. Now, Amazon doesn't publish their numbers, but it's very likely this is the most accounts with credit cards anywhere on the internet. So we're really, really excited about this. And that's a big milestone for us. Another milestone is let's look at one of these stores, the App Store. We recently just paid out over $2 billion to the developers cumulatively in total. Developers have earned over $2 billion from selling their apps on the App Store. And again, a lot of people have tried to copy this, I think, we're way ahead, and you can understand why developers want to write their apps for the App Store. So we're very excited about that. And lastly, the iPhone. We recently shipped our 100 million iPhone. So a lot of stuff going on, and it's all good. Now, today we're here to talk about Apple's third post-PC blockbuster product, right? That's how we think about these things. We started off uh, in 2001 with the iP iPod, right? Our first post-PC product. And uh, we've been at it ever since. In 2007, we added the iPhone. And in 2010, we added the iPad. And every one of these has been a blockbuster. So we're uh, in a position now where the majority of our revenues come from these post-PC products. And when we introduced the iPad a little less than a year ago, we said it's our most advanced technology in a magical and revolutionary device at an unbelievable price. Now, people laugh at us for using the word magical, but you know what? It's turned out to be magical, right? And people weren't sure that it was an unbelievable price. Well, let me tell you, ask our competitors now. <laughs> and they'll tell you. So 2010 turned out to be the year of the iPad. And uh, let me give you a few statistics on that. 
We sold almost 15 million iPads in 2010. And remember, that's just nine months. That's from April through December, 15 million iPads. That's more than every tablet PC ever sold. <laughs> you know, the tablet PC did not invent the modern tablet PC. It crashed and burned. The modern tablet PC is the iPad. And it generated a little shy of $10 billion in revenue for Apple. $9.5 billion in revenue over nine months. We've never had a product that got off to that fast of a start. As a matter of fact, many have said this is the most successful consumer product ever launched. Over 90% market share, and our competitors were just flummoxed. <laughs> they went back to the drawing boards. They tore up their designs because they weren't competitive. And uh, so there was one uh, Samsung got out last year, and uh, you might have heard the quote that they said. As you heard, our sell-in was quite aggressive, around 2 million. In terms of sell-out, we believe it was quite small. <laughs> so a lot of these were probably on the shelf by the end of the year. Now, our app store has over 350,000 apps in it. Over 65,000 of those now take full advantage of the iPad. It's larger screen, it's faster processing, et cetera. And some of these apps are just fantastic. Apps from Autodesk, all sorts of magazines and newspapers and publishing apps. Just wonderful, wonderful apps. Consumption apps, creation apps, fantastic games, and a lot of apps for business in vertical markets like medical. The things people are doing here are amazing. And again, they're taking advantage of this incredible, magical user interface on a much larger canvas with more resources. And the apps that they're writing are just fantastic. There's never been anything, as an example, like this for photography before. 65,000 apps specifically tailored for the iPad. Now, that compares to our competitors who are trying to launch these days with, at most, 100 apps. And, and I think we're being a little generous here. So, this is a huge advantage we have, and it's going just like this. Now, one of the things that enabled us to roll out this technology so fast was our Apple retail stores. They were built for moments like this. They were built to take new technology and roll it out and educate customers about it and be there when they have questions and issues. And uh, we have uh, uh, hundreds of Apple stores now. As you know, this is one of our newest ones in Chicago. And without these stores, I don't think we would have been as successful either. So we made a video about 2010, the year of the iPad. And I'd love to show that to you now. So let's roll the video. It's not often that something brand new comes along and creates a new category. That's a very rare moment in time. So it's very easy when something new launches that naysayers come out of the woodwork and all beat it down and say why it's not going to work. And, and it's so gratifying to see that instead it's one of the greatest things we've ever done. No one, no one predicted in their highest estimates it would be as successful as it has been. The iPad, according to some industry experts, is the fastest growing new product in history. You know, in 10 years of retail, I've never seen anything like the launch of the iPad. You know, I just remember that first day, and it wasn't how many we sold, which was an all-time record. It was the number of people that want to put their hands on this product. The number one reason people come to our stores is to try a product that they've heard about but never experienced firsthand. And the iPad is a product that has to be held, 
has to be touched to truly understand how magical it is. The iPad is not a personal computer. It's beyond that. Some people call it a post-PC device because it can do some of the things the PC did in a far more personal way. The iPad has become a global phenomenon. It's universal in the sense that it appeals to a wide range of people, from small children all the way up to senior citizens. And it's true worldwide. And then on top of that, it's finding new uses in places that we never imagined. The Chicago Public Schools is the third largest school system in the country. It is difficult to keep kids motivated in school and, and keep them engaged in the, the curriculum and materials. What we're seeing with the iPad is that they are engaged. You put the iPad in front of them and you'll see the kids immediately focus right on that content and start working through it. In a short amount of time, we're seeing um, gains as high as 50 to 60 percent in reading math and science with our classrooms using the iPads. I really believe that this is the future of education. Sometimes doctors are overwhelmed with data. What we've tried to do on the iPad is to give doctors at the point of care the tools they need at the exact moment the doctor can make a difference. What we're finding with the iPad is that doctors are spending more time with patients. In fact, doctors are engaging patients by showing them images, showing them data on the screen. So it's empowered doctors to be more productive, but it's also brought doctors and patients together. So I think what's so exciting about the iPad is it will change the way doctors practice medicine. The power of the iPad is it becomes a window into everything that's important to me in running my business. I've got our corporate communication on here. I have our data management system on here. Our customer relationship management system is on here. It's given us a vision of what is possible, of where our industry can go, how we can be more productive, how we can be more successful. This device is how we are going to run the future of the enterprise. Developers and customers are taking it further into places we could never have imagined. And we're seeing uses out there that are just heartwarming and so exciting to see because these are, these are uses that change people's lives. Assisting children with autism to communicate is uh, a rather complicated process. The iPad is absolutely part of our clinical practice here. The screen size gives us enough real estate to be able to create materials and applications that are meaningful to them. You know, we're not curing autism, but we're offering a tool that improves the potential of a person with autism. It gives them more opportunities to be better communicators, to be better understanders, to be better learners. The iPad is clearly the next step. It's a game changer. I define a miracle as something that comes in and changes your life for the better that you did not expect, you know, that you never thought could happen. When Leo was first diagnosed with autism, it really knocked me sideways emotionally just to think that things would be difficult for my child. I mean, you never want anything to be difficult for your child. It's hard for Leo to be independent. It's hard for him to self-direct. But with the iPad, you know, it just makes him happy and independent and he didn't have that ability before. This is something that my son can do, you know. He doesn't need me. You know, I don't want him to have to need me all the time. So. We created a device that was going to be indispensable in the things we do every day. And not only do we achieve that, but it's going further, deeper, faster into our lives than we ever imagined. And this is just the beginning. So, we've gotten off to an exceptional first year. And, uh, We'd like to build on that. What about 2011? Everybody's got a tablet. 
Is 2011 <laughs> going to be the year of the copycats? Well, I think if we did nothing, maybe a little bit, probably not so much, because most of these tablets aren't even catching up with the first iPad. But we haven't been resting on our laurels, because in less than a year, we're going to introduce today iPad 2, the second generation iPad. So what is iPad 2? What have we learned? What can we improve? Well, it is an all new design. It is not a tweaked design. It's not got marginal improvements. It's a completely new design. And the first thing is, it's dramatically faster. We have a new chip we call A5. Our chip wizards have come up with this. And it's great. It's dual core processors, right? two processors inside. And so we get up to twice as fast on CPU performance. But we've really gone all out on the graphics performance, up to nine times faster graphics. The graphics on this thing are wonderful. Same low power as A4. We don't want to give up any of that legendary battery life. And even though others are starting to ship, I think this is going to be the first dual core tablet to ship in volume. So A5 is a really a, a quite an achievement and is going to give us something that's up to twice as fast on CPU performance, up to nine times faster on graphics, and the first iPad was no slouch. So a lot faster with A5. Second, we built in some cameras for video. We've got a rear camera out the back, and we've got a front-facing camera out the front. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. We've also built in the gyroscope that we have in the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Now, having built in all of this stuff, one of the most startling things about the iPad 2 is it is dramatically thinner. Not a little bit thinner, a third thinner. 33% thinner. That's what it looks like. So if you look at the numbers, when you look at the numbers, gone from 13.4 millimeters down to 8.8 .8 millimeters thick. It's dramatic. And for those of you that have iPhone 4s, the new iPad 2 is actually thinner than your iPhone 4. So we're incredibly happy with this. And when you get your hands on one, it feels totally different. And all of these other tablets are coming out, most of them even thicker than the original iPad, nothing even approaching this. In addition to thicker, it's lighter as well, going from 1.5 pounds down to 1.3. And you might not think that's a lot, but when you get down to 1.5 pounds, a tenth of a pound is a lot. And uh, it feels quite a bit lighter. And it's got an all new design. It's just beautiful. So this is what it looks like. It's really thin. And it comes in two colors, black and white. We're going to be shipping white from day one. <laughs> so. And to give you some scale, this is what it looks like. Again, you can just pick this thing up. It almost floats. Black and white, black or white here. Now, in addition to having both colors, we also have models that work with both AT&T and Verizon's 3G networking from day one. So we support both AT&T and Verizon. Now, here we are adding stuff into the iPad, uh, cameras and faster processors and 
gyroscopes and all this other stuff. Uh, and we've made it way thinner. Something's got to give. And uh, you would think that we would have to give up some of the iPad's legendary battery life. But our engineering team found a way. And we have the same legendary 10-hour battery life as the original iPad with all of this extra stuff in it and yet dramatically thinner. And again, that's over a month of standby. So 10 hours of battery life. Again, a lot of these other guys are coming out with substantially less. And this has been tried and tested by every reviewer. Uh, iPads get 10 hours of battery life. So we're really happy to keep that and uh, never let that go. Now, in addition to preserving the battery life, when we add all this stuff, we've also preserved the price. And so we're going to keep the same exact prices starting at just $499, same exact prices as the current iPad, yet with all of these new features, a dramatically improved product. Now, some folks are out there saying, well, they're only a little bit more expensive than us. It's $799. Just when you take a look at this matrix of these six models, five of these six models are less expensive than $799. <laughs> OK, so they're, they've really moved up into the high ground. We only have one model that's more expensive than $799. And you add all of this together with over 65,000 apps tuned to the iPad. And we think 2011 is going to be the year of iPad 2. So just a beautiful product. So when are we going to ship it? April, May, June? No. On March 11th, that's a week from this Friday, we are shipping in volume in the US. And two weeks after that, on March 25th, we are shipping in at least 26 more countries, including all of our high volume countries, except a few where we're still getting regulatory approvals. So 26 countries or more on March 25th. This thing's going to be everywhere in the month of March. And that is iPad 2. OK, we've got some really cool accessories. So there's two I'd like to tell you about today. The first one we've had a lot of requests for, HDMI video out. Teachers want to hook iPads up to their flat screen TVs in the classroom so that everybody can see, et cetera, et cetera. We have now an accessory cable that does just that. Right? It gives, delivers HDMI mirrored video output. So exactly what you see on the iPad, you see on HDMI. It provides output up to 1080p. Uh, it works with all apps. So anything you can see on the iPad screen, you see on HDMI. It's exactly what people want. It supports rotation. There's no setup or configuration whatsoever. And you can even charge your iPad while you're using it. So if you're giving a presentation, you're running low on batteries, just plug in your transformer and plug it right in. And here's what it looks like. Place to plug in an HDMI cable and a place to plug in your 30 pin connector to pass through the power to charge it if you so choose. And so here it is on a HDTV. It's really simple and it works great and it's just $39. So for people that need that, we've got a great accessory now. Something that's going to be even more popular though we call smart covers. For the original iPad, we did a case. The case is pretty cool. It 
can prop the iPad up for typing or for watching movies. Worked pretty well, except that we went to all this trouble to make a beautiful design and we covered it up with this case, right? But more than that, we added thickness and weight to the product and we made it more difficult to use with some of the accessories. So we thought we could do better than this for iPad 2. And we started from the very beginning to design the case right alongside the product. And we have done that, but it's not a case anymore. It's a cover to cover the glass. It's a smart cover. And this is what it looks like. And it bends and folds around just like this as a typing stand and to watch movies on just like the the old one, looks great with black, looks great with white. And it even automatically, instantly wakes up the iPad from sleep when you open it and automatically puts the iPad to sleep when you close it. Now, how is this held on? Do we have some screws that you screw in? <laughs> what, what do we do? No. We use magnets. Our engineering and ID team came up with this idea of using magnets that grasp it and auto-align it so it's always in perfect alignment. And I'll show you a little video of this. You won't believe it. It's so cool. And you can remove it in a second. You can add it in a second. It adds minimal weight and thickness because it's just covering the top. It's got a microfiber lining that cleans the screen every time you move it, open it or close it. Again, it automatically wakes on open, puts the iPad to sleep when you close it. It's really easy to remove or change the cover. So you can have a bunch of them and pick which cover you feel like today and easily just put it on. And they come in polyurethane, which is used to make spacesuits. Uh, or leather. And so I've got a little video that just shows you how this thing works. And let's run that video. One of my favorite little videos. It actually kind of reminds me of a Pixar short or something like that. <laughs> um, but as you see, we actually built magnets right into the iPad itself. And then there's magnets in the hinge for the smart cover. And it not only holds the cover on, but it auto aligns it. It's really cool. And of course, what would these cases be if they didn't come in colors? So we've got five polyurethane colors and five colors of uh, leather. And they're really, really beautiful. They look great with the black unit. They look great with the white unit. The polyurethane cases are $39. The leather cases are $69. And uh, we think this is going to, we think people are going to love these cases. So, 